All right. Well, I finished my little feed screw. Got Acme threads on the one end, and they're left-hand Acme threads, and we're 3 8 24 on the other end. So hopefully that piece will be long enough. This is a piece of 3 0 probably 4 stainless. I think it was 3 0 4 and it was a piece I had left over. Uh, it's a little bit shorter than the original lead screw that was on those parts or on that saddle, but um, I don't think we need all that. This had to have adjustment through the through the uh, Acme nut on it. This one doesn't. And of course there are left hand threads and I shot a little bit of video on the, on uh, cutting these threads. And these are a relatively tight fit. They, uh, it, it's strictly used for adjustment for where our angle, where, where the angle on our handle is gonna be on this end of it. So once it's set in position, why it won't move there, that'll, that'll stay stationary. So all these threads are in this nut is a, uh, is a adjustment nut to, to where it sets. And of course our collar goes on this end like that and threads into the apron. And then we have a lock nut that threads on there. This ends 3 8 24. And then this is the other end of our adjustment. Goes on there. And then our handle sets in that. Actually the handle sets in that portion of it. Like that. So let's go over to the lathe and start putting this together and see how she fits. All right, well, I think we're ready for, for some assembly. I've already put the bearing back in the front, and I've got our lead screw back in here that's gonna go front to back, and our nut is on here for the cross slide. Now, I think I'm probably going to have to relieve part of the threads to get a little more travel out of this. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't think it needs, as, or I think it needs more travel than what it's got, and less threads from what they are, but we're gonna go ahead and fit things in place for right now and see how they go. This is a little bracket that's going to go on the front of the apron. I went ahead and powder coated it. I've slotted the back side of it so we've got a slot in it. And it mounts right down here like this in that position. So this is the bolt that's going to go on it. So we hold the back piece and take out the nut that's holding that assembly in place. We don't use that nut. And this mounts on there just like that. No, we don't have a real good view, but we'll get a better overview once it's all assembled here. Do a little bit of around it and see how it looks. <clears throat> so that's going to go in there just like that. This one, and we may very well go back and shorten up this bolt a little bit. We'll still make final adjustments to this. loose so we can go ahead and tighten it down a little bit. I think we'll go ahead and put our cross slide on there. slide will go on with the with the nut in position slide over the top of it but not with the with the feed lever on there there's not enough clearance apparently so we'll slide it back out to there there we go and this is a screw that holds it in place on top I went ahead and blued it when I blued yesterday like I say, I believe we'll probably have to disassemble this and change the, the amount of threads that are on there. But we'll get it in position, get it adjusted, and see about where everything should sit. Well, we might have enough travel with it that way. Okay, that goes on. Then we have a lock nut. bearing will 
all set in place. We can slide our gib back in place. It's going to go right in. Yep, there like that. This gib screw will be replaced with a with a gib lock once I get that ready. I'm not going to adjust these right now. I just want enough tension to hold that gib in place. That's close enough there. here like that Well, we may make some adjustments to that, but all in all, that looks pretty good. So there is, for all intents and purposes, our hand feed lever. Actually, it works very nicely. We'll, um, I'm not going to tighten everything down yet. I want to look it over and think about it a little bit. And then we'll probably make a couple little adjustments. And we can do the final assembly and final tune on this part. And then this section will be done too. And of course our stops fit back onto the edges like we had before. And lock into place so we're going to have our adjustable stops set up wherever we need them. Front and rear. wherever we need them to be. That's where we'll lock them in place.
So that's part of it's done. Let's see, we've got a tool post to go on there. That will set right here. We've got plenty of adjustment to get it in position. We'll have to set up our rear tool post. And then that's done. And we'll start doing a little more final fitting and things. The next major section of this, well, we need to work on rear tool posts. We need to cut our uh, rockers, our four rockers. I've got the material for that already cut. We'll set those up in the in the shaper and cut the cross hatch on them, and then we'll set them up on the rotary table in the mill and cut the bottom radiuses here to fit down there. And from there, we will probably move on to the collet closer because we've got the hand wheel collet closer. Um, I think we'll set it up for 3AT collets. I don't know that I have any 3AT collets in stock. I may have to order a couple just to use the setup fixtures. We'll uh, set up the insert that goes in here. We have to build that yet. And that's where we're at. So hopefully you found this a little bit interesting and maybe a little bit informative. If you find these videos useful, if you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and if you hit the bell notification, you'll know when I put out a new video. If you uh, see any of these little parts that you need for your atlas, and either I may already be producing them, or if you need something produced, why, you might shoot me an email. And thanks for taking the time to watch.